Hey there, it's Deb and Vance, and today we're doing a video about crate training. So when we have either a new puppy coming home or an adult dog that we want to teach to go in and to love its kennel, or a dog like Vance that um, hasn't been in a kennel for a little while, but I'm re-crate training him or reintroducing it in preparation before some travel. So what I'm gonna talk about is how to introduce the command to ask for them to go into their kennel on their own and then how to set them up to be successful so that it's a place that they want to go and a place they want to stay in. So what should we have inside our crate? Um, I like to have uh, a Nyla bone or something that the dog can chew on if they are bored in the crate. Um, also a thing like a Kong or a treat dispensing toy that he can work on that I can fill with kibble. Those are different things that are wonderful to have inside the crate. Um, also a bed if your dog likes it and if you can trust them to not destroy it, as well as a water bowl if they're going to be in there for an extended period of time. So let me show you what the final product will look like and then we will break it down into the different pieces on how to teach your dog to go into their crate. The command that I use is kennel. So I'm gonna ask Vance, kennel. Yes, good boy. So I'm gonna go ahead and reward. Good boy. Now, obviously this is going to be something that happens with a puppy on day one. Um, as you can see, I'm training in the bedroom right now. I do have a crate set up in the bedroom because I'm having him sleep in there overnight. Um, for many puppies, there's just an extra sense of security of sleeping in that same bedroom with you. So if you need to have the crate in the bedroom to begin with, great, you can always work on moving it further and further away once the puppy is comfortable inside their crate. So I'm gonna go ahead and have him come out and then we're gonna break down how to start introducing the crate. Release, good boy. All right, so I'm just using some of his kibbles. Um, with all of our commands, what we want to do is say our verbal command first, which in this case is going to be the word kennel, and then we're gonna follow it up with a hand signal. So with the hand signal, it's just gonna be me doing a motion for him to go into his kennel. Right now, I'm gonna have a cookie in my hand and I'm just gonna to toss that into the back of the kennel so that he goes in to get it. Um, to begin with, we're just gonna do in and out, in and out, in and out before we ever close the door. So Vance can say kennel and I'm gonna to toss the treat in. Good boy. And then I'll let him come out. I'm just gonna to toss the treat out. At first, I just want the dog to know they can go in and out on their own. Kennel. Good boy. Release. Good boy. Kennel. And good boy. Release. Good boy. All right, kennel. Good boy. Now as he's in the kennel, I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to feed him on the floor of his kennel. So that way he is learning good stuff happens by staying in my kennel. Good boy. And I'm putting these treats on the floor of the kennel because essentially what I want the dog to think is this place spontaneously produces food. I should really stay here. Good boy. So as he's choosing to stay in there, I'm going to continue to feed. What I am gonna to start to do is take a little bit longer now between giving my treats. At first, I'm going pretty rapid. I wanna do a very quick succession of treats coming into the kennel. And then as he's starting to understand this game of, ooh, it's good stuff to be in here, then I'm gonna take a little bit longer between having those treats come in. And as long as he chooses to stay in, the treats will continue. If he chooses to come out, Game stops, treat stops. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell him, release. And then I'm gonna roll a kennel out so that he knows that he can come out. So again, to ask them to go in, I'm going to do my verbal command, and then I'm gonna give my hand signal. So kennel, and it's just this move of kind of like a point, and then as I toss, I'm having that cookie go in. All right, so once your puppy is comfortable going in, they're comfortable staying in. What we want to do then is we're going to shut the door. And before I even latch it, I'm just going to start to feed them through the bars. 
They're calm, they're quiet, they're happy. And I'm gonna open the door, release. He can come out if he wants. Good boy. Kettle. Good boy. What we do here is now we just start to build up time that we are going to have our dog in here with the door closed. At first I'm feeding pretty rapidly. Then again, I am changing to not be quite as um, quick in how I'm giving my treats. I'm having a delay between. But what I want for you to watch for are signs of your dog getting stressed. We don't want to push them more than what they can handle. Build it up, build it up, build it up. This is the most challenging part because every puppy is different. Release. Good boy. Start by building up the time with your dog in the crate while you are in the room. When you can get to a point that the dog is in the kennel and they are comfortable, they are relaxed, and they can be in there for a few minutes before you are, um, you know, in very incrementally feeding. At that point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start get up and walk around the room. Dance kennel. Good boy. Go ahead and close the door. I'm gonna take him through it. Good boy. You can also drop kibbles in through the top. Um, if your dog is laying down, lay down. Good boy, good boy. Once they're laying down and they're in a relaxed position, um, you can drop treats through the top. The goal is for the treat to land just between his legs, right underneath his nose, so the dog doesn't even have to move to get it, that they are able to stay in that down, relaxed position and be able to get those rewards. So at this point, start moving around the room. And as you are moving around and your dog is in there and they are comfortable and they are calm, you can drop a reward in. Oh, sorry, buddy, that one bounced out. Good boy. Then you're gonna start to disappear. At first, just for a second, and then come back and reward. And then gradually building up your time for longer and longer and longer. When you want to have your puppy in the crate to be able to start to work separation time is when they are what we call safe mode. S stands for sleepy. A stands for after exercise. F stands for full tummy. And E is empty bladder. When your puppy meets all four of those criteria, sleepy, after exercise, full tummy, and empty bladder, that's the time that they should be the calmest and the most likely to take a nap and to sleep. Um, and that's the time that you want to try to utilize to do crate time. Start in the room with you and then work up to the leaving. Then for longer and for longer and for longer. Rule of thumb for length of time that dogs should be in a crate is one hour per month of age. Some dogs may not be able to handle that right away. Some dogs might do more, some dogs might do less. Um, if your puppy is fast asleep and it's been a few minutes over their hour per month of age, you can just let them sleep. Um, but my recommendation is try to get the door open once they've woken up, but before they start to bark and kick off. Um, that way, when the dog is coming out of the crate after having a nap, immediately take them outside to toilet. Crating is also a great way for the dog to learn bladder control. We should use a kennel that is uh, big enough for a dog to stand up, turn around, lie down, and stretch out. But it shouldn't be too big. If a crate is too big, then the dog will use it as a bedroom and a toilet. What you want is a crate that is snug enough to just be a bedroom, to take advantage of a dog's natural den desire, to keep its den, its sleeping area clean. So hopefully this video was a good introduction to low stress entry and exits into the crate.
Um, the last thing just to chat about is barking and whining. If the dog starts to bark and whine, please ignore the dog while they're in the crate. If they learn that barking and whining gets the human to come back and opens the door, they're gonna think, oh, that's the ticket. That's how I get out of here is I bark and whine. If they are barking and whining, I'd like for you to ignore. Looking away, turning your back, not giving them eye contact, touch, um, ignoring is the best way to say, I don't like that behavior. Once the dog is calm, once the dog is quiet, that means the door opens. If your dog is barking and kicking off and screaming and they, they are panic to get out, what I encourage you to do is instead of come to them and open the door while they're barking or whining, is to make some sort of a startle noise. If you need to drop a book, if you need to, you know, knock on a wall, some sort of noise that kind of stops the dog in the middle of what they're doing. So they're like, huh, what just happened? And in that moment of quiet, that's when you appear and you need to be calm, no stress, no excitement. When I come in to let the dog out of the crate, I'm looking over top of the crate. I'm not saying, oh, sweetheart, I missed you. Oh my goodness, it's so good to see you. Did, you. did you die without me? Don't add any of that fuss, just be calm. And they will pick up on that energy as well. So when it is time to open the door. Anyways, and then I'll let the dog know it's time to come out and that he's welcome to do so. Good boy. Build it up bit by bit. Make a goal of not um, having your dog get stressed out where they would get to a point of barking and whining. Just continue to increase your time a little bit, a little bit, so that they can handle what they have the capacity to do. Thanks so much.